All right. Some people like to say only say things nicely, but does it really work? That is the most important thing to me. Result is more important. The first passage this aim to you this healing of cancer can be achieved outside the standard recipe of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. I'm not quarreling with anybody, but I say if you don't feel that you should go that way, you can come this way. All right? Okay, let's see what happened to some people. This is a man, 47 years old, and came to see me, diagnosed with milk C colon cancer. He didn't want to cut. No operation. I said, no, I'm going to cut it first. Two weeks after you cut, come and see me. So here it is. Listen to what you have got to say. After they did the operation, they wanted you to do chemotherapy? Yes. Huh? One day before they discharged me, huh? Western came to me and said, I got good news, I got bad news. Huh? The good news, you don't have to do radiation. Yeah. The bad news is that you have to do chemo. If you don't do it, chances of you surviving for the next five years is 35%. I said, what happens if I do 55%? So you got 20% extra. 35 versus 55. Why you did not want to do chemotherapy? Now, since you do not know anything. Because my brother-in-law have gone to it. My brother have gone to it. I've seen how they are. You knew what it is then? Yes, I, because I was with her. Sitting down when they put the, the chemo in. Okay. I saw it. I just said that I don't want to take chances. Was it bad when you saw that they, they had chemo? What is bad? But you didn't like the way mommy looked at that time. You didn't like? No, because I was sitting with her. Yeah. And I saw the people around us who were the chemo. Yeah. They were bad. So yeah. I told myself, I, said, I don't want my, my mother to go through all that. At the same time, so we had I have a cousin who has leukemia. 19 year old boy. Yeah. Very healthy, yeah. very strong. So they had to isolate him in HKL, that room. Yeah. The way I see he lost his hair, burning and all that. So from there I said, this is too much, I don't think I can pick it. He doesn't even want to see our face because he feels so sad. And that adds to the fear a bit. So and you have been uh, on the herbs for how long now? Huh? Two years. 2004, uh, April. April. April 2004. Then 2006 now. Two years plus. Not two years plus, okay. As a person, how do you feel? Better. You feel good? Did you feel anything better than you were before? Or what? Yes. Huh? Yes. You. I don't have this tiredness. I don't have this, you know. You know, just like when I realize that if the, the, the waste inside is not, is still inside there, huh. I feel uneasy, you know. Huh, huh. I feel heavy. Uh -huh. it goes up to, maybe it goes to the head. Yes, yes, correct. You know, you know, I go to the toilet maybe sometimes three times a day, a day, four times a day. I went to Chiang Mai one time. Yeah. I didn't take the, I take the capsule. Yeah. I didn't take the herbs. Yeah. 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 I feel that there's something wrong with the body. Because hey, I mean, you used to get this like like uh, yeah. something, something, yeah. and I don't go to the toilet so often. I mean, I mean, yeah. it's, it's different from before. Yeah. Oh, you see the difference? See the difference. You don't take the herbs, you build uh, uh, Yes, there is a difference. You say that you used to have a flu once in a while before you had this. Mm. Now that you are on the herb, now two and a half years, how is your flu situation? I've never seen any doctor. Huh? No. no. You have never seen no. any doctor? There's no need to see a doctor? No, I only take, I only see doctor with taking material. Maybe they have uh, fever or You yourself? No has not suffered any no. problem compared to before, before you yes. take the herb you used to go and see doctor, see doctor. for your flu for your yeah, flu huh? mostly flu or cough sore throat flu and sore throat yes. you had that problem yes huh? very often or what i don't say that often if you say once in two months now for two and a half years you have never had i don't have never any. one in two months so never no. one day <laughs> so when you go for chemo Side effect is brought up. When you take her, side effect will disappear. That is 2004, and he is doing well. It has been more than six years. Medically, it is called cure. But I never believe in cure because I don't believe that there is such thing as a cure. Therefore, I say stay on, stay on course. Don't change your direction. All right, this is one case, just one case. I have got hundreds of cases like this. Another case. This is a tough one, ovarian cancer. You know it's tough. And she is in Australia. Very aggressive. 
move out to many different places. And the doctor said, no chemo, three months. Got chemo, two and a half years. Benefit two years, but you go in and out of the hospital for so many months, so at the end of the day, you don't really benefit much. But she said, no chemo for me. All right, listen to her. To my best of knowledge, she said, I've got all the cancer I could see that you know and I know. Yeah. They're so I knew. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. She says, so all I can offer you is to go and see an oncologist and do chemo, radiation and drugs. And I said, well, you know that I know that I won't do that. And she said, you're a very brave woman. I said, no, I think it's more brave to do the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> because I know about cancer. Yeah. I'm one of the lucky ones, Chris. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going in there not yeah. knowing anything. Yeah. Yeah. I have some knowledge yeah. because I've been looking after cancer patients all these years. Yeah. So I knew the statistics, the yeah. statistics. Yeah. And I wasn't going to be a statistic. Yeah. I knew that if I did that, yeah. what they're saying, my chances would be very slim. And then she said, in my knowledge, and I'm a very good surgeon, two and a half years if you do chemo and radiation. And I said, two and a half years? And I said, do you, do you know the living I've got to do? And she laughed at that and she said, okay. She said, but if, if you don't do it, she said, maybe three months. And I said, no, I'll prove you wrong. Because honestly also from experience that uh, the way you describe, yes, I think it is, it is dangerous. But uh, well, I'm glad you are what you are today. I mean, you know. Yes, it is dangerous. Do you feel sorry for yourself? Oh no. <laughs> no. Yeah, and and my life. thing is, I'm alive, <laughs> and I'm not just alive and sitting in a wheelchair yeah. or in pain or whatever. I'm not sitting here with a bald head. I'm here. Look at me. I'm going to ask you this. Let's assume being academic, being, being what, uh, what they say is that, well, you do chemo and everything. What do you do? Two and a half years, you go, virtually. That's what they say. And that's what they have been seeing. That's what they, you know, they treat people, they know roughly. Yes. Yeah. Two, three years, goodbye. Now, you have a solid one year. Which one do you prefer? If you, if you have a choice, they say, I want to have a solid one year of happiness without problem, or would I go into the system and end up two and a half years, I'm gone. Right. Which would be the choice? What I'm doing now. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, the quality of life is uh, the, the, the thing, isn't it? Yeah. I will never end up in a nursing home. Say I reach a good old age. Why would I end up in a nursing home and, and there's no quality of life. So quality of life is very important to me. I want to I want to be able to enjoy my family, enjoy my grandchildren, have a holiday to my to the bank to Penang. You know, do what I what, do what I normally do. One thing good about giving lectures like this, I don't have to talk. 